Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon to you on this Friday. I'm Eitan Wallace in for Nicole Gitsky. Thank you for having us in. And we begin this hour with developing news. Southern California Edison has shut off power to thousands of customers in Kern County. Two hours ago, the utility announced 4,533 customers in the Bear Valley Springs area, as you see on this map here, are without power, and 324 are under consideration to have their power cut. Now, this is all part of the utility's public safety power shutoff program, also known as PSPS. In essence, SoCal Edison will shut off the power in areas where its electricity lines and equipment are deemed a high risk to cause a fire. At this hour, tens of thousands of other Southern California Edison customers across the region are under consideration to have power cut off amid wildfire risks. And 17 News is your local election headquarters. And into our newsroom within the last hour, the Associated Press projects Republican David Valdeo is the winner in the race for the 21st Congressional District. The announcement comes after Fresno County released updated results this morning. The latest figures show Valadeo leads Democratic incumbent Congressman T.J. Cox by a margin of 1,729. By our estimates, Kern County elections workers still need to count roughly 4,500 ballots, but it remains unclear how many of those are from the 21st District. The other counties in the district are nearly complete with their canvases. Now, in a statement released Wednesday night after Valadeo declared victory, Cox responded, saying in part, I do not plan to make a statement on the outcome of the election until every vote is counted and we have the final results certified by all four counties in this district. Now, we have posted the entire statement on our website, KGET.com. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and you know, you know what that means. Today is Black Friday, normally the kickoff for the holiday shopping season. But like most things in 2020, things have been different this year. At the Best Buy in Northwest Bakersfield this morning, a group of roughly 100 people lined up in front of the store. But it was not like what we've seen in previous years. Still, there were deals, uh, and with that came the shoppers. We are getting a computer for my child. <laughs> Got to catch a great deal this early in the morning. And ahead on 17 News at 5, 17's Robert Price will report on the push to, to shop at local small businesses. It's all part of Small Business Saturday. From our 17 follow-up file now and new this afternoon, we now know the names of two people killed in a shooting in East Bakersfield earlier this month. The Kern County Sheriff's Office says 17-year-old Makai Bowen and 18-year-old Christian Howell were shot inside a car at the fast trip on the corner of Niles and Fairfax on November 18th. Bowen was pronounced dead at the scene and Howell was rushed to the hospital where he died. A description of the shooter has not been released and there has been no word on any progress in this investigation. And the sheriff's office is investigating a suspicious death in northeastern Kern County. It happened around 645 Wednesday morning. The California Highway Patrol was called out to the area of Graff Avenue and North Oak Lane for a crash. That's where CHP investigators say they found a man's body with traumatic injuries they say are not consistent with the crash. So they called in homicide detectives from the sheriff's office to investigate. And KCSO has not released any information on a cause of death or a possible suspect in this case. And pedestrian safety is an issue we continue to follow closely here at TV17. A 14-year-old girl is dead after she was struck by a car in northeast Bakersfield. Police and emergency crews were called to Union Avenue and Loma Linda Drive around 6.30 Wednesday night for a report of a pedestrian hit by a vehicle. The pedestrian, 14-year-old Kaylee Corbea, died at the scene. BPD says the driver stayed at the scene and cooperated with investigators. And we now know the identity of a motorcyclist who was killed in a crash near Plans Elementary School. According to BPD, the bike crashed into a car on Plans Road around 1 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. 52-year-old Steve Crisp died at the scene. It's unclear what caused the crash, but police say speed may have been a factor. The driver of the other vehicle is cooperating with the investigation. And now to the latest on the coronavirus in Kern. Public Health announced 295 new cases and no, uh, 205 new cases and no new deaths today. 
That brings our total number of cases to more than 40,000 to date, and 448 people in Kern County have died due to COVID-19. More than 10,000 people are recovering at home, while 86 remain isolated in local hospitals with more serious symptoms. And the Kern County Latino COVID-19 Task Force is hosting two more free testing sites this weekend. The next is tomorrow starting at 9 o'clock in the morning at Vallarta Supermarkets near the corner of Niles and Mount Vernon in East Bakersfield. And another one on Sunday also at 9 a.m. at the Vallarta on East Panama in Southeast Bakersfield. Walk-ins are welcomed and free face masks will be handed out at each site courtesy of Adventist Health and Jim Burke Ford. Well, the coronavirus pandemic will not stop a local nonprofit from helping seniors in need during the holidays. Once again, KGET is teaming up with Christmas for Seniors for our annual Stuff the Bus. The bus will be parked outside our station on Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 7 o'clock that evening. We are collecting necessities like toilet paper, paper towels, toothbrushes, shaving cream, and dryer sheets. Just pull up to the side of our building at 22nd and L Streets and pop open your trunk and the volunteers will grab your items. You can find the full list on our website, KGET.com. And in your 17 News Crime Watch, Bakersfield Police are looking for a man suspected of robbing a local bank. BPD says he went into the Wells Fargo on California Avenue just before noon Wednesday and gave a note to the teller saying he was armed and demanded money. The robber ran off after getting the money, and according to Bakersfield Police, anyone with any information on this robbery is asked to call BPD at 661-327-7111. And another bank robbery that same day in Bakersfield, uh, BPD says a man walked into the city bank on Oswell and Bernard Streets and again gave a note to a teller demanding money. The suspect then took the money and ran off. BPD says the suspect's description is similar to the man who robbed the Wells Fargo Bank. And Black Friday traditionally marks the kickoff of major holiday deals and that means more cars in parking lots and more targets for potential thieves. Bakersfield police are warning about just how easy it is for someone to break into your car and make off with goods left inside. Uh, this is after a man linked to about uh, 20 vehicle burglaries was arrested earlier this month. BPD released videos showing that man break into a car in a matter of seconds, emphasizing the importance of keeping vehicles locked and urging residents not to leave any valuables in their vehicles. Now, if a vehicle burglary occurs, BPD urges residents to report it as soon as possible. Even if officers do not immediately respond, the department said it will be able to share the information with patrol officers in the area who then can modify their patrol patterns in response. And the city is reminding residents that trash pickup will be delayed due to the Thanksgiving holiday. Trash recycling and green waste normally scheduled to be picked up on Thursdays will now be picked up today. And collections normally scheduled for Fridays will be picked up tomorrow. The Mount Vernon Green Waste Facility was closed for Thanksgiving but will reopen tonight at 7 o'clock. For more information, call the city's Solid Waste Division at 326-3114. And despite the COVID-19 pandemic, United Way of Kern County and the Bakersfield Condors are keeping a holiday tradition alive. The 22nd annual Teddy Bear Toss is set to take place tomorrow. This year, it will be a drive through style toss from the safety of your car. It's happening at the Mechanics Bank Arena from 10 a.m. until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All righty, let's take a look at the forecast for this weekend. Here's Kevin Charette. Well, we are looking at a great weekend. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Yesterday, our high was 60 degrees, so it wasn't bad. We're right on track with our normal, and we didn't see the rain that we saw last year when we picked up over a half an inch. Uh, today, the record set back in 1901 when we hit 85 degrees. We'll be far from that. Skies remain clear. I see no changes on that front for a while here, and we'll look at 60s uh, pretty much all around the state today. San Diego may be in the lower 70s, and then to the east of us, we're looking at 60s out of Vegas and Phoenix and the beaches. If you're going to be uh, making your way to Pismo Beach, mid 60s, sunny skies and north northwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, air quality will be moderate today with an AQI at 76 and we'll call for sunny skies. We may see a repeat of some uh, morning frost tomorrow morning. 63 today in Bakersfield, 61 in Delano, 60 in Taft for the mountains in the Carnival Valley. Sunny skies and east wind, 25 to 35. Uh, we'll look for 53 in Fraser Park. To Hatchby, you'll be near 52 today. 
60s into the Kern River Valley and then for the desert, sunny and 57 in Mojave. Your extended forecast looks like this and very little change. 60s across the board. Again, as I mentioned, maybe a few clouds Monday, next Wednesday, Thursday, overnight in the 30s to lower 40s. And then for the mountains, 50s to lower 60s throughout the next seven days. Overnight chilly into the 20s and 30s. And then for the Kern River Valley, we'll be near 70 Saturday through Wednesday. Overnight temperatures a little chilly as well into the 30s. So overall, not a bad forecast as we go throughout the next seven days here in Kern County. Lots of your weather. We'll send it back over to you. Well, Thanksgiving is over and that means it's time to put up the lights. Bakersfield City officials will host their fourth annual Christmas tree lighting tomorrow at 430 in the afternoon in front of Mechanics Bank Arena. Mayor Karen Goh and City Council members are expected to speak during the event, which will feature a live nativity and a visit from Santa Claus himself. Anyone in attendance uh, will, is encouraged to practice social distancing and plan to wear a face covering. Now, if you find yourself unable to stay six feet apart, be sure to wear that face covering. And speaking of lighting up the Christmas season, holiday lights at COM return tomorrow. Because of COVID-19, the Lights Taurus uh, drive through event this year. It's a mile-long winding path through COM's parking lot. Holidays uh, Lights at COM starts tomorrow and runs every night except Christmas from 5.30 p.m. until 9 o'clock in the evening. Now, tickets must be purchased in advance and are on sale now. So you can find more information on our website, kget.com. Finally this afternoon, basketball legend Michael Jordan has made a huge financial donation to Feed the Hungry. On Wednesday, Feeding America, the nation's largest hunger relief outfit, thanked the six-time world champion for a $2 million gift to the organization. The money comes from Jordan's earnings from the Emmy-winning documentary The Last Dance. The film was cobbled together from hundreds of hours of footage documenting the Chicago Bulls' rise to total NBA dominance in the 1990s. Now, Feeding America says the donation will help supply foo food to the more than one in six Americans who face food insecurity. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.